and uh, Alan's going to be talking about evacuation analysis as well. Um, using uh, what approach are you using? Uh, scheduling approach. Scheduling approach. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The process and visual approach. Thank you very so, much. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, thank you. I am one of the people who participated in, uh, in this project, and which uh, was not really from the practice, which was more involved in actually design, uh, like mathematics, than maybe uh, more than as my colleague who, who just presented uh, from Madrid. And so uh, we were uh, several people from uh, Mitz Clermont-Ferrand, Toulouse, CNRS, and also MIT and uh, Monash University in Melbourne. We were interested in to, uh, casting the, evalu the evacuation problems into operational research models, and next uh, seeing if it was possible to, to apply them uh, without the deep insight of the problem on the ground. And uh, we address, as a matter of fact, we have been addressing several problems. I'm going to talk about one of them, what we call the late evacuation problem, which is about scheduling the evacuation process. But we have also been working on the design of the routes, which are likely to, buy, to be followed by the, by the evacuees. So we split both problems because we consider that that the first one, the scheduling problem, was uh, an operational problem with decision in time uh, online, and in real time, and that the first one about the design of the routes to be followed by the evacuees was more a tactical problem with decision taken in advance according to different scenarios of spread of the wood pile or of the disaster since it could be something else than wood pile. And also uh, we have been addressing another problem, I am not going to talk about it today since uh, the topic is about evacuation, but it's also about firefighting strategy, that means how to distribute the resource and to schedule the, the use different resource uh, one may be provided with in order to fight the disaster and to adapt this use according to the way uh, the, uh, the fire is going to evolve. It's a kind of strategic games with the stochastic features since uh, one of the main characteristics of those disaster is that it is very difficult to anticipate the so um, this late evolution, I'm going to talk about this. First, I'm going to introduce this specific point, the late evacuation problem, which is about uh, scheduling the, uh, the, the way the people are going to follow the routes which have been assigned to them during the evacuation process. And so I'll try to describe the, the high day and the difficulty behind this problem, and maybe at the end we shall come back to the root design issue, this is also interesting topics about this. So uh, the late evacuation problem, we consider uh, as usual that we have to evacuate several places which are endangered, and uh, uh, that in every place we know know everything which is important, that means the population to evacuate, uh, the route <coughs> the different evacuees are going to follow since we, uh, we start from the point of view that it has computed before uh, in the context of a, a pre-processed decision, a tactical decision uh, while making, uh, supposing diff different scenarios. And uh, we consider also that uh, we know about uh, the time, the, uh, the last time when people have to be evacuated. 
we consider, we, we know more and less the speed. That means we put out every kind of uncertainty. It's a kind of simplification, it's a deep simplification, but the matter is not to be so accurate than to provide a decider, the uh, real-time decider, to some simple rules in order to supervise the evacuation process. Of course, we could try to involve uncertainty about the true level of the population we have to evacuate, about the true evacuation rate, which are possible depending on the kind of vehicle which are involved. But it would be very simple, uh, it would be complicated, and at the end, we want to arrive to kind of decision which are <coughs> simple enough to, to be likely to arrive in real context. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we add some hypothesis. The most important uh, uh, is what I would call the non-preemptive hypothesis, which means that the people, once they start to move, the people of the same population, once they start to move, they keep on moving until they reach the shelter, and they do it always at the same speed. That means they use the, the, the roads, uh, the, the ways, at the same rate, approximately. So uh, one may start with ask about this hypothesis, which is a, which is a simplification of, uh, of the model. One may ask if it were not possible to get better results was allowing the population to stop at some point and to start again and to, to make a dip, to, to use different speeds during all the trips. Uh, the reason is two sides. The first one is that controlling such a process from an operational point of view, people told us that it would be difficult because of paddocks, because it's not very easy to control people who are flowing. So uh, once they start, uh, it's better to let them move in a continuous way than to, uh, to try to control them to make stop start again and so on. But another reason is that uh, what we want to identify, to make a pair, is the pride is uh, the notion of priority. We want, at the end, to know which kind of population has a priority on another one. That means which, who starts using some road and who come next. And more and less, and at which rates. And more and less, it's the only kind of information we want to get at the end. And so we don't want to, to arrive to models not provide us with this information. And we may uh, notice something, so we want to optimize, of course, safety margins, that means the time between the, the last possible ending time and the real ending time. And we want to notice something, uh, we, we may notice something, this non preemption hypothesis, uh, at first glance, makes uh, the problem uh, simpler to, uh, to, to define. Uh, we deal only with priority rules and with evacuation rates. The problem is easier to understand. But from an algorithmic point of view, from the point of view of people who work on algorithm design, at the end it's more complicated. Because if we re relax this non journey Thesis. Uh, we may have more people who know about it. So the scale of complexity for the, the design of the, the problems and the design of the algorithm. And in this scale of complexity, relaxing <coughs> this non-production hypothesis makes the problem simpler. It's possible to design an exact algorithm where we change the speeds, the rates, and eventually the population to stops at some really knows. While uh, when you impose this 
non-partnership hypothesis, it's more difficult to design uh, really uh, an exact and efficient algorithm. So uh, according to this hypothesis, what we want to know is at which, at which time every population starts moving <coughs> from the, the place it has to evacuate and at which rate. So here we give a small example. Uh, for instance, we have a kind of sort of map with uh, evacuation place and with a shelter, and you may turn it into a kind of a graph of a network. Here I use a tree. In practice, of course, it does not be always a tree. It may be a more complicated network. But it happens that in many cases, the design of the routes, as a, the tactical design of the routes, makes up a kind of collection of trees like this. <laughs> and that means that people may be clustered in such a way that uh, they arrive to the same shelter and that the routes they follow uh, are more and less like this. <laughs> Not exactly like this, but more and less like this. Anyway, the kind of uh, method we, we define may be applied for a, to any kind of networks. So here I give an example. You see uh, with a tree because it's easier to explain. Where you have five population uh, with uh, different uh, people inside. And uh, you have deadlines. Those deadlines are the last time when all the evacuees must have leave the place. And you have uh, in yellow the maximal evacuation rate related to every road inside these transit networks and the time travel related to every evacuation road. And you see, if you look carefully, you see that you have two critical populations, the fourth one and the fifth one. The five one because of uh, its uh, very small de evacuation deadline, 13. That means uh, that uh, 160 people have to start moving fast in order to make in such a way that every evacuee had left the place five before time 13. And also the population four because of the evacuation rate, which is uh, the maximal evacuation rate, which is small. And you see uh, that you, if you, uh, you may be, you are ready to start early and at a uh, rate large enough in order to make those 150 <coughs> people leave before time 28. So um, what we want to compute is uh, evacuation starting time and evacuation rate. And as a matter of fact, what we really want to know is on which every arc, every road, who is going to start first and who is going to start next and who are eventually the population who are sh going to share part of this road and according to which distribution of the roads. Uh, so, what uh, can be seen is that it's possible to have a, a nice representation of the problems, what we call RCPSP-like representation, because RCPSP means resource constraint scheduling problem. And we may uh, focus on the time when the, the different populations start entering on the last arc or start finishing on the last arc and when they start, they, they finish uh, going through the, the beginning of the last arc. And so <coughs> you have a starting time here, and they start on the last arc, an ending time, and the height of the, which is related to the evacuation job, which corresponds to its evacuation rate. And you have to, to locate kind of rectangles like this. On, on the plan. Uh, so you can see easily that uh, it's not so easy to 
find a good solution. For instance, if you start with the intuition that everybody is going to move at the same time at time zero at this at this maximal right rate, then you see clearly what well, diagram is maybe not very easy to understand, but you see that when they will arrive to the end of the networks, there will be a congestion. So uh, some will have to stop, <coughs> some will have to keep on. You don't know exactly which one. There is a risk of panic, so overcrowding, things like this. Another bad solution, uh, you start, you say, okay, it's not possible to make them move at full rate at time zero. So we make decrease the rate and we allow them 30% of the maximal rate and this way, there won't be, you can check, it's uh, not difficult to check, there won't be any kind of congestion to uh, in the final part of the networks. But in such, in such a case, you see if I come back to this uh, original uh, right diagram, you see that the population four, if you allow them only to move at rate three, it will take 50 time units for it in order to finish moving from its evacuation nodes, so it won't work. Okay. Um, a good, here you get a good solution, maybe not the first or the best one, but uh, it's a feasible solution. And according to this feasible solution, you see that as a matter of fact, the key point is that you make four and five start simultaneously at time zero, and only when five is finished, then you allow, you allow one, two, three to start. And this is the information we, we want really to get. That means this will be the information which will be robust to the fact that the things are not going to happen exactly the kind of data we are provided. It is this uh, kind of, uh, of logical way to organize the, the schedule and the evacuation process <coughs> which has to be kept. So the ideas, I'm not going to enter into details because uh, those are algorithmic uh, features. Uh, we walk into two steps. The first one is uh, we try to construct good feasible solution with a, a kind of flow-based heuristic. I'm going to give you a few hints about what it means. And next, you can to try to improve this solution by compressing, by augmenting, making decrease the evacuation rate, while keeping the same logical uh, relationship between the evacuation process, that means which starts before, which comes after, that were, which have been arising from step one. That means step one provides us with a skeleton of the evacuation process, a logical structure, and next we, we try to, to adjust the, the evacuation rates. So this notion of flow, it's simple, the equation is simple. It's a way to <coughs> formalize the key question of who is starting first and who is coming next. We imagine that there is a kind of unique resource, which is the access rate to the roads, to the lanes of uh, the evacuation transit networks. And uh, we imagine that, for instance, the evacuation job, the evacuation population five, which is using uh, 33 rate unit uh, during the time its evacuation process lasts. Next, when it, is, when it is finished, it gives this resource, this access to the world, to the, the population one, two, three, according to this distribution. And this provides us with what, what, uh, what is called a network flow in operation research. You see that is like uh, in electricity, uh, the rate which is used by population five is distributed exactly as if it were water 
or electricity to the population which comes just after. Okay. So um, the for formalization of the model, the main things we want to get, of course, are the date, the time when every population is starting moving, the evacuation rate, and this network flow, which tell us for every road how many, which is the quantity of um, resource or rate access access rate to this uh, to this road is transmitted from population I to population J. And this is going to give us the logical relation which, which, uh, which uh, tells which uh, evacuation jobs start before which one. So, uh, the rest is uh, purely uh, pure formula. It's about the part uh, related once you got the logical skeleton your evacuation process, you have to adjust the evacuation rates to make them increase, to, to compress, uh, to, to make a decrease the time needed in order to perform the whole evacuation process. It's a kind of mathematical process with a mathematical, mathematical program with a gradient and a, a mathematical features. So I don't give two details about this. This is a global scheme, scheduling scheme. So first construction of the first feasible solution, efficient feasible solution through the flow approach. And this provides us with the key information, who is going for every arc, every road, who is going to move first, who is going to move next, and so on. And next, when you, once you've got this, you have this, uh, you have to process this uh, improvement part of the process, uh, of the procedure, which is about finding the best rates, the best evacuation rates, which are consistent with uh, this log logical structure. Okay. So, uh, what we have been doing as uh, I told you, uh, <coughs> we have been uh, working <coughs> also about the design of the woods. We have been performing, uh, designing a specific uh, uh, procedure which uh, work uh, with what are called uh, time expanded networks. That means networks where you associate with every node, which is a physical kind of physical entity, you associate time value, and you have to, pro to, to manage those kind of structure, which may be huge. You have to manage them in an implicit way, which you only consider a kind of active part of your networks in order to make the computation feasible. And also we have been working on this five factor strategic design. Okay. Uh, it should be finished. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Conclusion. Uh, what I uh, did say, but uh, uh, okay. The, the numerical result for the procedure I've been describing are good enough. Uh, are very <coughs> close. We are able to get the exact solution in most cases. That's a theoretical solution. It's not that important since we know that there is a lot of uncertainty behind any application. So the, the true problem is not to, to reach the exact solution, but it's always satisfactory to, to do it. Uh, we have been addressing all those issues. Now the, the problem is uh, the problem that one of the speakers has been mentioned this morning. Uh, it's uh, the job of people involved in design, software design, and the question, the challenge is how to, to make uh, this kind of work uh, possible to cast, to apply into a uh, practice, uh, practical situation by people on the ground. That means how to fill the gap be between this kind mm -hmm. of uh, studies, of, of 
design of lightweight efficient tools, uh, how to fill the gap between this and the situation of the world. Okay. Okay. Our next speaker is uh, Steve Quinn.